What would you do if you had a $1 million per month Shopify store? Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this one, I've managed to get hold of Alexander and Andreas and pull them away from their $1 million per month Shopify store. I met Alexander in Berlin when I was at the Shopify summit, we got talking and it was a really interesting chat that I had with him about how he managed to build this business from nothing with no experience with his partner Andreas and build it into a million dollar per month store. If your dream is to build a six and seven figure dropshipping store, then make sure you stick around because these guys are about to drop some incredible value. Firstly, thank you guys for coming on. You know, I know how busy you guys are with your business. You started from what I understand, you started dropshipping and now you're into a multi-million dollar business uh, with your Shopify store. So obviously me and Alexander, we spoke in Berlin at the Shopify summit about you know how, how big your store had grown and what you guys are up to. So I just wanted to get- Many more things. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get you guys on here to basically give some experience, some advice to the viewers and just really talk about how, you know, just the story from that very first day up until where you guys are at right now. So if you guys just want to introduce yourselves, everyone know who you are and a bit of background on what's going on. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for that invitation today. Um, yeah, Alexander and me, I think, met many years ago. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, long time ago, I think seven years ago or eight years ago, something like that. And we tried many, many different businesses before. So we were in sales, we were in normal online marketing, we tried our own businesses, but everything was not the really, really big deal. Yeah? So one day Alexander came up with an idea. He told uh, me, hey, Andreas, let's do drop shipping. And I said, what the fuck is drop shipping? <laughs> what is this now? Yeah? And then he showed me some videos and he, he was really, uh, he was at really this time, out. there was not many videos on the internet. This, you know, for three years, there was not much on the yeah, internet. Was, so. I think it was end of 2017, beginning of 2018. So it was really in the in the in the beginning, yeah, for for the for the the most people out there, and then. I checked out some videos and I found it very, very interesting. So we started our first stores and we failed really like everyone. And we thought yeah. we will sell many, many products. We just built this Shopify store, General store. Facebook ads, yeah. With some creative, with these big emojis. Yeah. Buy now, shop now, <laughs> share this video. 50% yeah. off. Yeah. Nobody bought. <laughs> Maybe. I think we, yeah. we sell three pieces in the whole time yeah yeah but we we ordered the product we made videos by cell really good we videos spent yeah days for producing videos for cutting the videos we by cell. do one week in my garden making <laughs> videos one week <laughs> yeah yeah and 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 really we we had no success we burned much more money the store was not optimized nothing we had no idea it's like if you want to start speaking Chinese and you're in the first class of, of, of China. Yeah? Yeah. And then the things go, go, went on and we, we did our next store and our next store. I think we had three or four stores three. Yeah. and we were able to sell them. Uh, even if they were not really successful, they had, I think, maybe $1,000 in turnover or something like that. Alexander? We sold them, I think, for $400. Yeah, one for 400, another for 1,000. The buyer was not happy. <laughs> yeah, so we were able to get back a little bit of the ad spend we had. And we, I, I know a friend of mine since, since a long time, yeah, you know, the second Alexander. And at this time, Alexander and me, we ran out of money. So we really had not much money on our side. And we really wanted to be successful in dropshipping. And there was a, an expensive mentoring. It was around $5,000. Yeah. And Alexander and me thought about to get this mentoring to go to the next level. And this friend of mine uh, said, hey, I will finance this mentoring. And we said, okay, 
then you can get 10% of our brand. And this and was the best deal in his life. <laughs> yeah, this was the best deal of his life. Now he is a, a shareholder of a multi-million dollar company and is very happy and he's a good friend of us. And uh, yeah, we did this mentoring. This mentoring was, it was good. So we were then able to make turnover. So we did, I think, in our first month after the mentoring, $30,000 in turnover. And the next month, $55,000 in turnover. And after, I think, four months, around $200,000 in turnover. But the bad thing was only maximum. It was not break even first time. Yeah. yeah. First of all, it was not even, not break even. And in the end, after four or five months, there were a profit from around $10,000 divided by two yeah, uh, minus tax. I would have earned more without the job in Austria from the government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we had big turnover, but no profit. And this was, I think, one and a half year after we started with dropshipping. So we put a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of time, the whole time of our life. We stopped every other project we had and we put everything into dropshipping, but there was no profit. And I tell you, more than 95% of all people would stop on this yeah, journey. They, they would say, drop it, oh, yeah. yeah, it will not happen. It, it's not working. It's scam. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what they all say, but we didn't. Because we wanted to, yeah, we wanted to. Because I saw from the other big brands or other great e-commerce guys, they had a lot of turnover and I saw their, their lifestyle and I know this business, um, yeah, this business is working, but you must found the key. <laughs> so yeah, you basically went for, was it two, three, four months making turnover on the store, like a high number or a really high number on the turnover, but you were seeing no profit at all. So yeah. sort of what, why, why did you carry that? Other than obviously just wanting to achieve your goal of, of having a successful business of what really made you carry on with it? Because like you said, most people would stop at that point because you're still spending money, you're still spending time. If you're, if you're doing 200,000 in turnover and seeing no profit, what made you carry on? What, what, what was it? I think there were, there were two points. The first point, Alexander and also me, we know e-commerce in general works, but it, it works not for us. So we are the problem. We have to be better. And, and we second, know yeah. the product is running because we had a really high turnover. So yeah. we, we were searching for the, for the problem. Maybe the, the price we bought the product was too high. Maybe the ads price was too high. And so we checked up. And, and I second, think yeah. we bought the product then in the future from another supplier cheaper. And that's, that was one of the big success keys because then comes the point and then we was a really, really profitable. Okay. Yeah. So and the a case second point, you basically got the supplier cheaper. Yeah. 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 This was a one big success key. <laughs> the second point why we didn't stop was that we had lots of businesses before and this was more or less our last chance because we took money of the friend of mine, 5,000 bucks, and we took our whole time for one and a half years and we wanted to succeed, cost it what it costs. Yeah? So then after we found a new supplier, we saw there is a margin and then we optimized on that margin with every tool you can think of. Up I think sale, now- cross sale, yeah, email marketing and whatever. I think we have so many channels a consumer can get the message of our brand now i think more than 10 channels yeah? so that was the the key to success so we optimized this margin and then we scaled yeah so so when when was the first point that you started seeing like this was profitable how long into the store did you start thinking i'm gonna make we're making a bit of profit now these changes we've made you know, at what point did you think, okay, well, we could actually do a little bit more with this and this is actually looking really promising. Good it was question. five, 
five or six months after we started yeah. this this store yeah. but we was um, we was sure the product is running and then we saw we make a good turnover also profit at, at the moment then but at this time um we was not 100 percent sure how big we can scale the product or the product line and yeah so what now was we know at this point then so five six months in what what kind of turnover were you seeing about five or six months into the store um which turnover have we had in the this time um it was in the higher six figures so yeah. it was half a million per month and more yeah wow okay and this was crazy because now we know that the the market is big enough to sell enough <laughs> if you are for example if you're in the beauty niche in the fitness niche in the in the nutrition niche yeah the market is so big you you can never run out of customers yeah, yeah? Yeah, so, it is pretty much everybody, isn't it? Yeah, yeah everyone can make well, it. Normally, it's unbelievable. You see your turnover and you think, okay, that's crazy. Every day the same. <laughs> How but, much yeah. people can buy this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> yeah. cool. So when you, obviously, you, you were doing these massive numbers on turnover, like what was your sort of, sort of advertising strategy, your initial testing strategies to, to, to even get to that point. Like, you know, cause obviously people who are watching this video now, they're not going to be running half a million pound turnover stores, half a million dollar turnover stores. They're not. So like, how did you initially start to get that like, traction so you could then scale it up to like six figures per month? Like what was your initial plan with that? It's very, it's very important that when you have, when you found a product, what really works, then produce own content. Produce yeah. creatives, own creatives, put in lots of energy in, in ad. We content. make all our creatives self. So yeah. we make a mo movie outside, we make really, and um, we, we cut it and make short clips. And every clip is a little bit different. And we spend a lot of time for that, but this is one of the impo uh, important points. Yeah. The success strategy of lots of people out there is, hey, I see a product what works, I copy their ads, then I got banned from Facebook, then I duplicate the fan page, and then I got a lifetime ban and say, hey, why Facebook blocks me? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the key to your initial traction on this still then, what you're saying is having your own customized content that like you made yourself, record yourself, you said you spent a week in your garden to actually film some of this stuff, like is you're saying that was what got you that initial traction, you know, click-through rates yeah. on, your store, on your ads are very important and that's kind of what you were seeing with your store. These videos are not the, the pro, uh, not really professional. I would say when you see in the in the TV uh, uh, short spot, um, this is professional. Our videos are not high-class professional, but the, the people who bought the product can, can identify with these videos because it's, I would say, real. This is yeah, this is a real video. They, they see the product in the video and they can say, okay, I need this. And yeah. These are videos we produced with our phone and we yeah. are not filmmakers. We are just real people and we filmed the product and yeah, this looks But nice. we make a lot of videos. There's really, I think we had at the moment 15 ad creatives, yeah, mm -hmm. different ad creatives. And this is for us one of the biggest success keys. Yeah? And how many of those ad creatives have you still got then? Are you still running 15 at the moment? Or have you narrowed it down to like one or two? Like, well, how are you running your ads at the moment? They are, they are running, I think, 15 plus different ones oh. in, in, I think, more than 100 audiences. Every lookalike you okay. can expect, every custom audience you can get out of the Facebook manager, we use it and we tested it. So, but in the beginning, we just had some interests yeah, to, to generate some sales and then we generate the, the main lookalike. So the knowledge how to do this is out there for free everywhere. But the background needs to be very well organized. Yeah? So yeah. you can do a good ad strategy, but if the background is bad, like the landing page, like the trust, like your customer support, like the your shop must be look good. You need a good conversion rate. You you need abandonment card flows and all that stuff because you need, to, you need to manage the cash flow in the background, customer support, legal issues, tax issues. There are so many parts of a company 
And the people that just put on a website, they start, sometimes they're making sales, but then everything breaks down. It explodes because they have no idea what is in the background. And that's the important key. Yeah. We had also, <laughs> it's really fun, we had also pictures in the ad creatives. Only pictures and they are also converting really good at the moment. Yeah. yeah. In the that's retargeting. Show, yeah. Retargeting and nice pictures are really powerful. Uh, really powerful. Yeah. Okay. So obviously five, six, so we're about five, six months in now. You, you're starting to see a bit of profit on the store. Um, your turnover is like six figures every single month and your profit is starting to increase because you're lowering your costs in the back end. You're getting all your retargeting funnels set up. Everything's you know, starting to really come into place. So at what point did it start to become consistently profitable? Like what kind of profit are you seeing? The profit margins, you know, is, is it a case of you're, you're at the low end of like a 10% or are you up to say 60, 70% profit margins? Like what are you kind of seeing now that everything is sort of narrowed down and then really felt like you've honed in on everything that you need to do? Mm -hmm. okay. From the point we changed the supplier, from that point was really um, positive from that day. And I think from, from the beginning, we had a bigger um, March, um, I think, how much? 28% in the beginning? So when, we, when we did around $200,000 a month, we had profit margin around 28% on the average. It's high, and then so it goes down. Sometimes, some days over 30, then 25. But when we scaled to half a million plus per month, the, the uh, profitability dropped. dropped a little bit to average 23%, something like that. But all in all, it was more than from the $200,000 turnover. So, mm -hmm. and you, you collect more data, more email addresses, your business grows. So it was worth it to do more turnover with a little bit, uh, uh, with a little decrease. And your pixel that. get a lot of more data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I got to ask this because I'm curious anyway, but what has been your biggest ever day? Because I know what my biggest ever day was. Oh, yeah. I know it's going to be any, it's not going to be any Black any, Friday sale, I think so. Yeah. Well, Black Black Friday sale, Black Friday, and the day after Black Friday. We did $55,000 on these two single days every day. So $110,000 in turnover in just two days. And the profit margin was higher than 30%. Uh, wow. It was incredible. It's a really inspiring story. The fact that you struggled for so long as well. It's not even a case of, oh, you struggled for a few weeks and then you hit it big, mm. you stumbled across a... A, a product that just magically worked for you. You had a product; it wasn't. It was working, but it wasn't profitable. But then you Correct. stuck with it. You, you grinded through it. You pushed through it, and you finally got to a point now where you're doing. I mean, what what, what you're averaging now? About a million a month, is it, or something? You you're at now? Like what? what this kind is of... uh, with a, we had a million per month. Then it was the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. They make us big problems. <laughs> we we lose approximately one hundred thousand because we had a high turnover and there was the Chinese New Year. Yeah. And we decide not turn off our ads and run this week when the Chinese makes New Year. And this was the biggest mistake. <laughs> because, because after because the Chinese... Coronavirus wasn't there. Yeah? We just had the Chinese New Year decision and we thought, okay, this nine days, no shipping, we can handle with our customer support. Mm -hmm. So thousands... Some refunds, but it's okay. Yeah. Thousands of orders were stocked there and because of the coronavirus yeah. and then on the last day they really had to be shipped now then there was the lockdown of china and coronavirus so this was a really bad situation and the company really struggled we lost we lost a lot of money yeah. approximately and one hundred thousand dollar because we refund the most people because the, yeah. the they got no um, package mm -hmm. for two months yeah. mm -hmm. But and it's okay. When I get no two, two months, no package, I would also refund my money. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not only about the money. It's about PayPal, Stripe, yeah, dispute rates, customer feedback score, everything. Yeah, it throws everything. some money from us in Stripe. Yeah. Everything can block you. If the numbers of disputes are too high, they block you and then your whole business is down. So this was really... Dangerous. And our customer feedback score was also dropping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting though, is it? Because that's obviously 
an issue that's completely out of your control. It's an issue that affected it was globally. You know, it wasn't just obviously dropshippers. It affects every single industry. It still is affecting industries. You know, so like how long did you, I suppose you paused your ad, you shut down your store for that, for that period of time. How long was it actually down for? Two months. Six weeks. Yeah, yeah. Six to eight weeks. Six to eight months. Wow. Okay. The problem is, um, at the at this time there was uh, the shutdown in china there was coronavirus in china and our main market is the us and there was a uh, coronavirus not really in the news this was the people don't know it really and so you must explain somebody <laughs> that uh, coronavirus and you don't know this coronavirus is um uh, yeah the products are stuck in the whole logistic and the most people say yeah this is scam i don't believe you and this was the point yeah the people believe don't believe it and so we refund a lot of money now the people know coronavirus because america had now the biggest problem from all <laughs> and now when you say the the package is delayed because of the virus logistic is delayed they say okay i understand because i look in the tv and i see it <laughs> So it was, those, it was those early days that were actually a really yeah. good point. I, I remember when our customer support agent manager, we have a customer support agent manager, she managed our other team of customer support and she wrote me a message, hey Andreas, there is a virus in China. Um, do you think it can affect our factory? And I and Alexander, we Googled this. It, the virus in Wuhan. There were only some newspapers. 800, um, 800 kilometers. 800 kilometers uh, from our factory away. So Alexander and me said, no, it's too far. 800 kilometers will not affect us. And one week later, whole China yeah. was blocked. Two weeks later, Europe was blocked. Three or four weeks later, the whole <laughs> world was locked down. Yeah? So that was so crazy. crazy. <laughs> I think we will tell our children this story. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody will, to be fair. Yeah. 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 Well, that, I mean, I suppose that's going to be the biggest challenge you've had to overcome, really. That was the biggest challenge because that was the point. Um, we know that the, the whole company was really dangerous. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I think the smartest thing you did was pause it. I think if you tried to carry on, you know, I would have been. We tough. stopped out because we, we, we turned all products also from the shop offline because um, we turned first the ads offline and then we saw a lot of people buy in the shop, but we know we can't deli deliver the packet. So we turned all products offline and make a big pop-up because of the virus, all this stuff. That's what was really the biggest challenge we ever had with our company. <laughs> we spent, yeah, well, we lose a lot of money and we spend also a lot of money for the customer support because we refund a lot of money, but if we would refund all what um, what they bought in this time, then we we would lose much money more. So the customer do a really good job at this time. Okay. So we also had no turnover, and we had to pay back the Facebook marketing costs for every customer who bought, uh, even if the customer gets a full refund. So for example, if somebody bought something for 40 or $50, he gets back the $50, but we spent already $25 on, on marketing uh, costs. So oh, yeah. we had to refund more than we earned and we had to pay the fixed costs of the customer support of Shopify Plus. And if it's a everything. Stripe this boot, we must pay like $15 or, uh, for these boots. Yeah, if you lose a this boot. Yeah. So really <laughs> high cost at the yeah, moment. Yeah, you're going to hit quite a bit then. Uh, I suppose over the time you've been doing this, you know, overall you're in your massive profits by now. Obviously, it's going to have affected your lives in a really positive way. You said in the beginning, you obviously didn't have a lot of money. You were struggling. You had to get that 5,000 from a friend just to, you know, get some advice on actually how to start this properly. Like what sort of impact has this now had on your lives? Now you've grown it to a million dollars per month in revenue kind of thing. Like, what do your families think? What do your friends think? You know, people who aren't involved in this. Oh, there is a that funny thing. Whole life. When, you, when you try to be an entrepreneur for years, <laughs> the people don't believe it. They say, oh, no, no, that will not work. Search, search for a secure job. And really, everyone knows. Yeah, yeah, 
I know that Alexander Andreas, every time, I know to, you will make it. And it's really like that. And it's so funny because I know the people who believed all the time in me and I know the people who never believed in me, they now say. <laughs> yeah. This is really funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the same for you as well, Alexander? Is that, is that yeah, the, some people in the beginning, it's normally they say it, it's not working because it's his... 20 project and uh, the before they also all get down and from now i get some it's really funny um from the school i get some message on instagram or linkedin and they write me people hey can, can you remember can you remember me I say, yes yes you was in the school yeah i saw you was in the newspaper you you do a really good job with the company um how do you do that and so, so I can't explain in one message how I do yeah. that because this was over here. Yeah. In one sentence, Alexander, in one sentence. <laughs> so it's I funny. Suppose, it's funny too. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I get the same, you know, people reaching out and saying, okay, how we show me how to do this and things like that. We so, talked in Berlin. Yeah, this yeah. is also a funny story from you. <laughs> yeah, it is good. But I mean, so, well, I mean, obviously, you, you guys have got a ton of experience now. If you look back over the last year, year and a half, you've You've learned so much about Facebook advertising, how to sell things, you know, the whole supply chain network, all that kind of stuff. If you could, sum, it's going to be hard this, but if you could summarize everything you've learned and you were, you were able to give advice to someone who's new or someone who's struggling with their stores, like what would you say is kind of the best bit of advice you could give them to help them break through that wall that you had to break through and then grow it to kind of what you're at now? What would, what would you be your best advice to them? Paul. <laughs> My best advice would be they, if they hear something about e-commerce or drop shipping, they should not start one week after they heard about it. They should mm -hmm. start to educate themselves, look YouTube videos, join groups, uh, look into blogs, read everything with people for at least three to six months and read something about entrepreneurship, something about business and so that they know the fundamental things of business and marketing, and then they should start really, really small. And all the most of the people they hear this, then next week they register a Shopify store and then they start burning money. So my suggestion is educate first, read a lot, speak to people, look for partners, maybe they did it already, and then start slowly. Yeah, yeah. the most people uh, want the success um, too much. Um, they, they, they set up a product, they run ads, and it's not working. Um, we bought the products, we check the quality at home, and this is all, you need that all, because if the product are shit, and you scale it in the first three weeks, and the product broke, and every second customer, then your feedback score crashed, and the business is over. Yeah. So you must make the plan, and step by step, um, you can build up the business and if you do that it is working okay yeah right. for sure because you checked up the quality from the product and the ads and when you do all step by step and not struggling into this whole thing i think when this is the best way and um, also joining group connecting with people um, searching for mentorship because they are good free content outside of course but there are some hacks they don't tell you the people for free. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously you're at this point now where you, you build this business. It's, it's doing massive numbers. What, it, what is your kind of future plans with what you've got now? Cause I think what we were talking about in Berlin, does, isn't it like a private label product now that you've done, you've moved from sort of just generic dropship into more of a private label brand. I think that's what you're working private on. Private label. Yeah. yeah already. So what, what are your next steps with this? What are you planning to do in the future? Have you got a roadmap? What you want to do with the business? Is it a case of just sticking with this product and just, you know, rinsing it dry or are you looking to expand in that niche or another niche? What, what's it, what's your plan going forward? For sure. Um, we want to stay in this niche <laughs> and we want to build up this brand. Um, we have a lot of things, um, uh, points that we want to um, set up in the future. Um, now at the moment, because of the virus, um, must things are on hold because we're optimizing processing and all that stuff and for me a dream is um, with this product to one of the biggest player in this market or the big player in the market because there's there's other company and this is a really really, really big company signs 
years on the market and my dream is um to hit uh, hit up this company and join on the really on the high highest level with this product in this niche yeah, yeah really i think that. you too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay that's great i mean i don't have any more questions guys so i just want to thank you for for jumping on and, and doing this because i know you're going to be extremely busy with everything that's going on with your business i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add to the people watching if there's you know, any more advice you want to give anything you want to share with them um, they can join uh, they can follow us on instagram maybe you put in our instagram names under the video yeah and i can do that we will do after the virus situation we will do a lot of content on yeah. instagram I at the moment all is on hold <laughs> because yeah. this is so much work with the Ross. i hope that uh, that all we go to normal in the next uh, four months i hope <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody's kind of hoping that it gets back to normal pretty soon. But like I've been stuck in my house for 44 days now and I want to get out. So <laughs> it, we're all hoping that it's going to gonna get back to normal soon. But I hope that the situation will be good better. And I hope all people stay safe at home. And it's a chance for the most people. You, you stay at home so you can learn or read books on all that stuff because now you can't say i don't have the time because no, if people are at home no, <laughs> yeah, now it's the sure. time <laughs> yeah definitely well thank you guys i really appreciate you coming on it was absolutely brilliant speaking to you keep in touch i know alexander you say next time you're in the uk we're all going to go out and catch up again yeah there's one cancelled because of the yeah, right no, no, no. so when you guys are over you know hit me up we'll go out we'll get we'll get a bit do you stuff. live do you live in manchester yeah manchester yeah. i'm in manchester so um if you ever over here just give me a shout and we can, we can meet up. oh yeah when the Thank virus is and we make a trip <laughs> definitely thank you guys i really appreciate it chris thanks. thank you goodbye so there you have it absolutely incredible alexander and andreas just want to thank you guys for coming on and doing this that story is one that you guys need to learn from because it is just you know it's all about pushing through those challenges never giving up believing that you can do it and if those guys had given up early on like a lot of people would have done they would never have got to where they are today so if you're thinking about quitting dropshipping and you're thinking that this isn't working for you just remember this story because all it takes is you to push through and break past that wall and it can change the rest of your life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully there's a lot of value in there for you to take away. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. And if you have any questions at all, drop them down below because I am still trying to answer everything that comes through. But other than that, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one.